Well, how do you deadly dandy there, chums? It is I, Captain Stephen. Today, chums, we're doing the glass bead, Miss Yone. Heck, yes, we are. So I'm up in the Nexus, and I'm over at this terminal unlocking stuff. And I'm unlocking that stuff. That is a little satellite that lets you call in whichever exocraft you got built in the actual area. But this one is the one I want, the orbital thingy majiggy that you can actually install on your freighter. And if you do install that on your freighter, as long as you've built that exocraft before, you can call it in wherever you wish without having to build all the bay and all that sort of shenanigans again. So it does save time because I doubt very much you're going to find a planet that is littered with these relics. When you go to one, you may scan for another one. It sends you back to the one you've been to before. So I tend to only maybe find three or four in one system or planet. Uh, you don't have to install this actual um, uh, receiver there. Just the one room. That's all you need. Now I've gone to see the cartographer and I'm swapping navigational data for this secret map. That one up there. I'm going to grab four of those. The little green one. Yes. Goes to for secured facilities including manufacturing facilities and we want to go to a manufacturing facility and unlock the recipe and so if you land right at one of these places and head on side you will have to shoot the doors off yes you're gonna to have to blow the doors off heck yes so let's go and hit up this waypoint because i'm still doing that mission as well you know the navigator every waypoint counts and all that so here we go let's head on over and let's shoot the freaking doors in there we go you can see down there i've got 44 of the um, actual waypoints points done dilly done i'll be bringing a full episode of how to get those so quick in a future episode so here we go i've got into the actual terminal interface and you're confronted with a riddle you can see there that it mentions about it's hot to the touch and that it's super hot and that you got sweat running down your face or whatever so yeah there we go sweat was slowly rolling down my forehead so i'm going to put in coolant because that's the most obvious one normally there there's little subtle hints just read the text and you should be able to do this. And once you have, select learn new recipe. And once you learn the recipe, you can learn the solar mirror. The solar mirror you're going to need to actually build your first Nautilan Bay. So yeah, that is an essential component to building your Nautilan. You could also do the glass bead mission. Sometimes it pops up and you can do it that way. The solar mirror you can sometimes buy in Galactic Trade Terminal and interfaces. So there you go. I'm going to grab that. I mean, we have got two months to do all this. So if you do want to do the glass bead mission as well as the um, abyss mission that does pop up as you're doing this, the d deep one, it, it can work out OK. So I'm heading down to a watery planet. Now, watery planets I find most frequently in yellow star systems. And it's the only yellow star systems right now that I can call my freighter to. If you did want to bring it to a red system or a green system or a blue system, you have to install the warp drives in your freighter. And that's not an easy task at this early stage of play. So I'm just going to head on down to yellow systems, which are more likely to spawn the watery worlds, and call in my freighter into that system. So I can then call in the Nautilan. The first Nautilan, though, you have to build the bay. So it doesn't matter if you've got all that fandangled tech in your freighter. You still have to build the bay the very first time. And you have to leave it built. Don't disassemble it. Um, but Because otherwise you've got to build it again. Basically, you've got to have a bay of the actual exocrafts somewhere in the verse before you can actually call them down using your freighter. So I have called my freighter into this system anyway. Oh look, we've got some golden beetles flying in unison and drowning in the in the background there, chums. One of them didn't come back out. Oh, bless it. Oh no, the other one's going in the drink as well. He's gone. Too late. Yeah. Oh no, he's crawling out. He's okay. Phew. Ah, bless him. I wonder where his brother's gone though. No. Oh, look, there he is. He's okay as well. That's good. Cool, right. Okay, brilliant. We can now build our Nautilan. If I had some, uh, yeah, I need to get some ferrites and some other bits and bobs. But the main thing that you've also got to get is these little things. These little things over here, the sulfide crystal or the crystal sulfide. Doesn't matter which way around I say it. One way is right, the other's not. There you go. Crystal sulfide. I always get it around the wrong freaking way. Right, so I need about four of those. Now, each one of these pods is only going to have three, so I need to go and find another one. There's one hiding behind this rock, but I do need some ferrite. Oh, that's pure ferrite. Darn it! A damn and blast! Because if I do try to refine that into ferrite, it doesn't. It goes into magnetized ferrite. You can't revert 
pure ferrite. Oh, look, there's a big fisherman fish fish. It's a sharkyman shark face. Oh, he's freaking ace like a barracuda. Go, barracuda. Oh, yeah, reminds me of uh, Kill Bill all of a sudden. But yeah, look, what, what we need to get out of here. Cool. And uh, yeah, let's go back up to the land and let's go and call in our Nautiland. So this is the first time and I have to build it. Build the bay. Like I was saying before, Johns. Heck yes, can't drill that home enough. Now all I need to do is install this teleporter into there. Well, it's not a teleporter. It's, 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 it's a radar. It's a radar. High-powered high sonar is what it actually is. That's the actual name. It was on the freaking screen. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I call it a teleporter because that's what it looks like when you actually install it in your ship. It's the same freaking icon. It's confusing as fudge. Right, I have just scanned... But you can see there, it didn't find anything. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't. It just take off on the planet and fly to maybe the opposite side of the planet and land again. This is still the same planet that I'm doing it on. And I'm going to do another scan. I usually try three times on a planet before I give up and then go somewhere else. And if I do find one and then I've gone to the relic site, I scan again after the relic. And I may do three on a single planet before then it starts looping you back to the same ones you've already seen. So yeah, although saying that chums, I found a planet towards the end of this video, a frost world that was freaking littered in these relic sites. And all I was doing is finding three in an area, then flying off, maybe, you know, a couple of thousand U's landing and I found another three freaking mentals so yeah i'll be giving you the code so stay tuned for that i'm also going to give you the location the exact location of where i found my last one of these relic sites that actually gave me the offering to turn in the the um, hypnotic eye oh yes so you are going to need a hypnotic eye for this mission as well chums now i got my hypnotic eye inside of a crashed freighter but i will show you how to find a hypnotic eye in a bit you're also going to need these living pearls to, when you dig up the chests. You're going to get given a trident key by the relic site. Yeah, I know, it's weird. And you're going to need a living pearl to open the chest. So let's head on down to the relic site and interface with the relic. Yes, interfacing with the relic. There's this weird sort of thing underneath the... It's like something out of the movie, The Abyss. You know, the talking liquid. It's very much inspired by that, I think. Well, we're going to head on down. I need some kelp. Yeah, if you are running low on oxygen, hit up those like little candelabras and you're good to go. Yeah, it does look like a, a lamp, like a modern type one. The sort that you would find in most hardware stores. Here we go, let's pick this up. And uh, yeah, we are going to get ourselves... A little bit of gnarly story that sounds a little bit too Earth-like for my liking. Yeah, strolling across the bridge with my torch in my hand. Blah, blah, blah. It feels a bit weird. Seashells underfoot and all those sort of shenanigans. Yeah, it's like an episode of Cockleshell Bay or something. Right, so let's dig down here and let's open up the chest. There we go. Now, some people have said that they have found it inside these chests. I have opened like a gazillion of these chests. I've never had it inside one of these chests. But then I've never had it happen inside of a freighter either. I am just an unlucky person, I guess. There's also a space anomaly that sometimes drops these things. So something else I'm doing as I'm going along doing this, because I'm jumping system to system to find these watery welds after doing maybe two or three on a watery weld, is flying into the actual station. Now, when you're doing this, I like to try to do a couple of things at once. It's like the collector. You can see there, I've already notched up six. I haven't gone to any land-based relics. The underwater relics count towards the collector. So, yeah, do this one. Don't do the collector. <laughs> and all's good. I'm also chatting to all the little natives up inside of the stations. Heck yes, I am. And I'm learning their lingo. Heck yes. So I'm pressing on with... A couple of missions at the same time while doing this one, so that was kind of stacking, which is pretty damn freaking sweet. So I'm going to chat up all these guys on this actual uh, platform, and I'm going to learn a load of words. The lingua file, that's the name of the milestone. It's not something rude. It does sound like something weird, doesn't it? Lingua is like tongue, and then file is like, oh, okay. Yeah, you like licking things. No, it's a language type thing, apparently. But here we go, let's head on down. Righto, so now let's head down to the watery planet, this watery marble, and let's go to a relic site. Now I have run out 
of my pearls. So I need to grab some more pearls before I do anything else. So I'm scanning around. I'm looking for clams, but I've found some creatures. So I'm scanning the creatures. Where are you, my clammy friends? Oh, heck yes. There's a load of clams over there. Let's go over yonder and let's get those pearls from the clams. Right, so well, let's go and talk to this little chap. Hello there, little chap. How are you? So let's talk to this watery guy. Hello there, watery guy. How are you? Except the waves. And yeah, I believe that you've got to do about eight or nine of these points before it actually gives you the actual option to turn in the hypnotic eye charms. I think it is kind of like you've got to get all the lore, even though it sounds very similar. And it, it's kind of, there's a few changes in some of the paragraphs and a little bit of extra stuff going on there. But it does not tie into anything at all. It's got nothing to do with the Atlas. It's got nothing to do with Travellers. It's, it's almost earthbound. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel in place. Now, I did find space anomalies. Now, apparently, people have said that they've managed to get it from there. There you go. That just popped the collector. And the funny thing with the collector is it says, dug up treasures. Well, I just got that one in frickin' space. No spade or terrain manipulator required. Now, this area of space chums spawns this as a first spawn when you jump into the system. In a method I call pulse fish in. So you fly away from the station for about 40 seconds and it spawns in. You shoot it, you get your treasure, and then you pulse for about another 10 seconds and call in the Nexus. Make a save in the Nexus, reload, fly back towards the station, and it will pop again after about 40 seconds. I sped up the footage here. It should pop again, and I will kill it again, and I will get something different. Fly into the station, save, reload, fly back to the Nexus. Rinse and freaking repeat, chums. And yes, you can see that I got another containment uh, a, a, a sample there. Now, a lot of these are yellows as well. So they sell for a heck of a lot. Now, I didn't do this for too long. I did this for about maybe half hour or so, just to see if I could get one of those weird samples, the terrifying samples, the ones that you need to make the glass bead mission pop. Because technically, if this worked, then you wouldn't need to go to any of those relic sites. Now, yeah, I stuck at it for a while, but probably not long enough. It may work. I'm not 100% sure. But here you go. I'm going to do a reload. Now, like I say, this happens every single time. So there's the actual coordinates if you want to come and give this a bash. Even if it doesn't work, you're going to earn yourself quite a shed load of units. And there are some nice planets in this system anyway that have got water so you can go and land and you might be able to do some relics here anyhow. So here we go. I'm shooting this one and I actually do get a sample. I get a jettison sample there that is cursed, but it says it only travels over 50 light years with you. However, the one that you need to get is something like 60 light years or something. So here we go. Let me let me bring it up on screen. I'll show you the thing that I found. So it's down here. There you go. The Abyssal Grubs. Terrifying sample. It kind of fits the bill, but you see there it says 50 lifetimes. The one that you actually get, the one that actually pops a mission is something like 60 lifetimes or something so there's a slight difference perhaps that one's more common maybe i needed to do it until i got a rare one i don't know now if you scan for a building using your nautilus rather than the relic site you're going to find one of these sunken buildings and there you're going to find these little weird things that sit on the roof these abyssal horror things that when you kill them, you're going to get the hypnotic eye. So if you haven't got the hypnotic eye, that's where you get them from. Or you can get them inside freighter runs and things like that. And I've had a couple of bugs where I've actually found these things on land, which <laughs> rare as rocking horse, but it does actually happen. Rocking horse turd, I should say. I'm going to pick those up. Those little eyes, they just do disappear quite quickly. A little bit like the larval cores that you get on ground. So make sure you grab it rather quick. And yeah, there's some oxygen in the centre of the room in those if you are running short. OK, well, I'm back up in the station and I'm talking to this Corvax guy. He's the last guy I've got to talk to to get my lingua file unlocked i really don't like saying that word but here we go here comes the badge there it is yeah it does feel a bit weird lingua file it sounds like somebody that's a fan of luigi or something who knows out of the mario brothers anyhow we're gonna make an offer on this corvax's ship it's an a class and it's a shuttle but it's only worth like two million i nearly had enough units to buy it but i figured well, mine's a C-class. I may as well do the exchange. So I move everything over into this A-class because I know as soon as I exchange for this A-class, the other badge is going to pop for the good ship. Heck yes. 
And what's the surprise? What, what's the reward for getting the good ship? An S-Class Explorer that's far better than the freaking C-Class Explorer I had. And it looks freaking terrific. So now I'm just going to claim that ship and transfer everything over into the, the new ship. And I'm going to go scrap that ugly little shuttle that was only worth two million. So that's a good little tip. If you are in sort of like a Corvax or a Geg system, a lot of the ships that fly in are going to be little shuttles. You do get them in the Viking system as well, but not as rampant as you do inside the Gek system. I mean, the Gek is probably the best one for the haulers and also the shuttles. But yeah, here we go. This, I mean, this is a callback system. But there's my new ship. Triumph. Awesome. So now I'm going down to this relic site. Now, I've hit up probably about nine or ten of these at this stage, chums. And I think I've had all the lore. Here we go. Make the offering. Hypnotic eye. Chicka pow. Chicka boom. And done. I mean, if you turn in, if you if you look on Wiki, you can actually see all the law that it lays out for these. And this is that I've had all the law, and then it popped. So I, I don't think it's as random as people make out. I think you have to go through them all. But there's my thumbnail for this video. It looks freaking sublime. Yes, I think you have to go through all the law. Although that it reads very similar, it's got nothing to do with the actual, you know, the whole Traveller escapade and the Atlas. And it doesn't even really give you much reason as to rhyme as to why this place is here, or what that blob is, or why there's treasures underneath it, or anything. It, it, it's weird lore. It's not lore that I actually enjoyed, and I enjoy the lore of No Man's Sky. This lore, in my opinion, could do with a re freaking hash. It really could. But there we go. We've, um, we've turned that in, which is awesome. And I gave you the coordinates on the screen right now for where this planet actually is. And if you do want to go to this exact relic that I'm at right now, I'm going to give you the longitude and latitude in the top corner of the screen there. Lovely job. So hopefully you can go there. I don't think it's going to pop for you if you went there as the first one. I think it actually has to be done in order. Now, I found myself a person that looked like a relatively new player. They've still got their first original explorer that you take off in. I gave him that stack of beads or whatever those, those weird abyssal things were. And I'm hoping it popped the mission for him. I've also gave him some maps and I gave him some other bits and bobs that I think would help him. I gave him, yeah, awesome stuff. And yeah, I leave him to it. He's probably got all things popping up on his screen now saying, yes, you've just done the glass bead, blah, blah, blah. And he's probably thinking, what the fudge just happened? <laughs> I get up here and look, he actually typed in there. Thank you. Which I think is freaking ace. I gave him a thumbs up back. Yes. And uh, yeah, I, I give him a little, uh, I give him a little thank you back there. There you go. Chikapa! So there you go, Aussie. I hope that helped you out. And I hope this video helped you, the viewer. Until next time, people. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again. Heck yes. I want to say a massive great big thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. And thank you to my backers over on Patreon and on YouTube membership. If you do want to support this channel, you could just not skip my adverts. That throws revenue down my avenue. Or stay with Captain Steve a little bit longer and hit something on this screen. Heck yes, there's also merch on this screen now. Awesome!